Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for the patch 12.21 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with an updated tier list for all 5 roles and give you an idea what's going to be good and what's not going to be so good in each role this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champs, and this video will give you an immediate advantage over the other players in solo queue. Make sure you subscribe because we make meta videos like this just to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at the one thing that everyone can agree that Riot does well, the skins. This patch will introduce the new Imperion skins. The champs debuting with this very colorful line are Jax, Jin, Lux, Vex, Zac, Zed, Pike, whose skin is legendary, and Cassante, who is also receiving a prestige addition for the skin. Some of these champs weren't exactly deserving of a new skin, what with Lux already having a million, and Pike getting a legendary not too long after getting a mythic. Either way, the skins are pretty sick if super vibrant, mind-bending color schemes are your thing. Usually, after we go over the skins, we talk about the system changes, but Riot is keeping this patch super small, since the preseason is just around the corner and they have most of their resources going towards that. As a result, we have nothing to talk about as far as this goes. Before we get into our tier list, I want to give a quick shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players who have spent years climbing the ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. So if cramming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions to instantly get better at the game sounds good to you, you should go really pay them a visit. And they're available 24-7, so feel free to head over at any time. Now let's get onto that tier list. First, we'll start with the top laners. We'll be moving Sejuani up to the OP tier. This one time off meta pick has become such a powerful mainstay in the top lane that we've even seen her picked plenty of times at Worlds. She has strong laning with ability to snowball really hard with an early lead. She can go on to bully even the best duelists in the side lane or group up and become a powerful frontliner for teamfights. With a decent mixed damage profile and her being a tank and her having next to no hard losing matchups, you can pretty much always safely blind pick her every single game and get pretty good results. Cho'Gath has been doing a bit better lately and we're moving him up to the A tier. His passive sustain and strong trading makes him a very safe blind pick, but he is kind of limited by how hard he can carry the game, since his CC is unreliable and he can have trouble getting onto targets. Hence, he can't really make it to our top 2 tiers for now. Darius has also been on the upswing as of late, so we'll be moving him up to the A tier as well. If you can get an early lead with him, you can very easily run the game. But he's also really susceptible to jungle ganks since you naturally shove in any time you traded with the enemy laner. He's also really feast or famine, so just dying to a gank or two can really put you out of the game. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Famous's buff last patch has done him a lot of good, so we're moving him up all the way to the OP tier. His ability to dive onto targets has become super oppressive, leaving enemy ADCs with basically no counterplay aside from sit two screens away from any potential fight. Baldbear has once again returned to the OP tier. He's just way too reliable of a pick in the jungle. Not only does he have insane damage early game and the ability to turret dive as soon as you have his ultimate, but he's also incredibly easy to use, so there's really no chance that you mess him up as long as you aren't making dumb plays. Belveth is once again getting a round of nerfs, and this time, we think that there'll be definitely enough to move her down at least one level on the tier list. This one is a bit tentative, and is subject to change, so check in with the mid-patch update to confirm our thoughts on her next week. We originally moved Evelyn up to the Esther last patch, since the buffs really seemed good, but after the patch went live, she didn't improve as much as we hoped. So we moved her down to the A tier with our mid-patch update. But now that we have more data to go off of, Eve definitely looks good, and we're correcting our correction. The buffs for Shinzao this patch look kinda nice, but we're a bit hesitant to move him higher than the beads here. The thing is, he's gonna be a pretty snowball reliant champ, and since they didn't give him big buffs in the early game, I doubt that will change. I know people are playing Blitzcrank as a jungler, so we're adding him to our tier list. Despite him being relatively popular in this role, he's doing awful, so we're placing him in the D tier. I've seen this work a few times, but it's just so inconsistent. It only really works if you're able to get ahead the entire game and constantly force picks. When behind, and even a lot of neutral games, it's next to useless. Now here's our mid lane tier list. Vex moves up to the OP tier this patch. Vex is super lane dominant, being able to poke from afar or get a bit closer to deliver a big burst of damage to punish foes that disrespect you. A big weakness a lot of mages have is being vulnerable to assassins, but Vex is literally built to counter them. As long as you're smart with your cooldowns, your fear and shield should make it so that even slippery foes like Fizz or LeBlanc can never land good trades on you. Brand moves down to the S tier. He's still a reliable pick with an impressive poke and wave clear in lane, and some of the best early game team fighting and skirmishing of any mage. But his performance has fallen off just a bit too hard for us to keep him at the highest level. Anivia moves up to the S tier. Anivia is definitely not the most proactive early game champion, so if you're looking for a champ to stop lane with early and roam around the map a ton, look elsewhere. But if you're the type of player that likes to play it safe early and scale up, then she may be the one for you. Her laning phase is super easy. Just last set what you can for levels 1 to 5, and once you have your ultimate and lost chapter, mow down wave after wave for free. 
Usually champs with a lot of pushing power take advantage of it to roam and mess with the enemy jungler or other lanes. But with the Nivea, you very rarely want to leave lane before having at least your mythic done. Instead, just use the timer to get a bit of vision down, or take free resets to give yourself an item advantage over the enemy laner. We overestimated how much Seth's nerfs would hurt him last patch. We definitely expected him to go down to the A tier or maybe even the B, but he's still doing so well that we're moving him up to the S tier. He's easily a safe blind pick, and as a counter to other melee champions, he's definitely OP. We're moving Wukong up to the A tier for the mid lane. The buff to his ultimate last patch did very little to help him as a top laner. That's because the issue with top lane Wukong is that he just gets rolled too bad in lane for his ultimate to even really matter. But mid Wu actually has a good laning phase, so buffing his ultimate gave him a way to better use his lead later on in the game to carry fights. That said, he's just a pretty good champion, nothing worthy of being in our top 2 tiers for now. Jace gets moved up to the A tier this patch as well. He's done so much better here than top lane for two reasons. 1. The shorter lane is much safer, and 2. The champion pool tends to be squishier, so you can actually bully your opponent once you start getting some items. We'll be moving Galio up to the A tier this patch. He's a safe blind pick and will always be useful in any comp, but he's really at his best against assassins. He's easily OP tier against them specifically, since you can completely shut them out at all stages of the game, preventing them from ever snowballing, essentially making the game a 4v5 if you stay on top of them. After being super dominant in the earlier parts of the season, Ari has spent a lot of time being between meh and pretty bad for the past few months. We're hopeful that the buffs this patch will help fix that, so we're moving her up to the A tier. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. I was pretty happy to hear that Misfortune would be getting some nerfs this patch. She's just been way too dominant for way too long, especially in the middle and lower elos. And then the actual changes got revealed, and it reminded me of my last relationship. Pretty disappointing to say the least. The so-called nerfs is just 10% of the slow being taken off for E, bringing it all the way from 50% down to 40. The rest of the changes are just various AP ratio buffs. All in all, she's probably going to feel just as OP as before. Jen moves up to the S tier. As the support meta has slowly shifted towards more and more aggressive being strong again, Jen has also moved up due to his synergy with him. He pairs okay with enchanters, some better than others, but he's definitely at his best when he can lane with either a mage or engage support. That's because Jen is definitely a champion that you want to be ahead with to carry. He's not nearly as feast or famine as champions like Lucian or Draven, but he also doesn't just win the game for free at 3 items like most hyper carries. Speaking of hyper carries, we'll be moving Kog'Maw down to the A tier. What I just said about more aggressive supports working in favor of Jin goes against what you want for Coggers. A more aggro bot lane meta means that there are a lot more enemy lanes that can force fights on you, or at least make you play so safe that you miss out on CS, making them an overall less consistent carry. Samara moves up to the A tier. Again, this is a result of the bot lane meta shift. She pairs super well with engaged supports, and honestly can even go well with mages and some enchanters that can match the aggression that she needs to have in lane. Samara is definitely a champion where having a duo partner to communicate with in bot lane can make a big difference. If that's the case for you, you can definitely consider her an S tier pick. We'll move up Varus to the B tier this patch. This doesn't really mean much, he's not bad enough to warrant him being in the lower two tiers, but he's just so mediocre, I still can't really reason picking him. If you want a lane bully, Trisana is a million times better. Ash is also just as good at winning lane, while having the same engaged strength, except her ult is global, so you can make plays across the map. To finish things off, we have our supports. Blitzcrank's tune-up lets him in a very broken spot, and last patch's nerf didn't really do much to change that. He's still been dominating the rift, but this round of nerf should really be at least more impactful. He's going to be quite a bit squishier, with his damage also being lowered in extended fights, aggro bot laners should be able to go all in on him a bit more confidently. That being said, we're really 100% sure where he belongs on the tier list now. He should be still good enough for the S tier, but we'll consider this tentative for now. Check back next week once we post a mid-patch update to see how he ends up. We're moving Nautilus up all the way up to the S tier. This may not line up very well with his win rate since he hovers around a 50% in solo queue, but there's a good reason for it. Just like with Scion Top and other supports like Rel and Leona, Nautilus's win rate is heavily skewed by a big portion of his player base building Solari. When you go even trout on him, you get way, way better results. We're moving Seraphine up to the A tier. She's a reliable pick, but since she has a pretty expensive build, she truly doesn't reach a strong point in most games. Hence, she can't really make the S or OP tier in this role. That being said, you'll want to play her as a bot lane carry, so you can take all the farm for yourself. That concludes our patch 12.21 rundown. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord, which will be in the description link as well. Oh, and one last thing. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.